today topic is Sidgwick theory. So the second theory of complex compounds. So according to Sidgwick theory, it gives the information about uh, stability of the complexes. Stability of the complexes. Again, it helps the ligand to metal bonding. It gives the information about uh, ligand to metal bonding nature. So the lone pair of uh, ligand electrons which donates their pair of electrons to the metal atom and it and it is denoted like this arrow mark, like this arrow mark. This arrow mark indicates uh, the coordinate covalent bond, coordinate covalent bond. So, but uh, it, it, it gives another information to find the stability of the complexes effective atomic number, effective atomic number. So, it gives the some mathematical expression to calculate the effective atomic number, effective atomic number, which is nothing but uh, actual atomic number minus oxidation state, actual atomic number minus oxidation state plus 2 into its coordination number. So, simply it is also known as actual atomic number minus primary valency plus 2 into secondary valency. 2 into secondary valency. Here E A N is effective atomic number. A A is actual atomic number. OS is oxidation state, we know that. CN is coordination number. With the help of uh, effective atomic number, he gave the stability of the complexes, which is nothing but. So, the effective atomic number of any metal in a complex, which is uh, equal to the next uh, noble gas, then it's said to be stable complexes. Then it's said to be stable complexes. For example, 36, which is equal to the krypton. 54 which is equal to the xenon, 86 which is equal to the radon. So whenever any complex which is equal to the 36, 54, 86 of its effective atomic number then it's said to be stabilized complexes, stabilized complexes. So the main purpose of uh, Sidgwick theory is to find the stability of the complexes. But nowadays so, Sidgwick theory, alternative theory is 18 electron rule, which is a more used and more advantageable, advantageable theory of uh, stability of the complex compounds. Stability of the complex compounds. Again, Sidgwick having one limitation. One limitation. So, whenever ligand approaches to the central metal atom, so, ligand donate their pair of electrons to the metal atom, then metal accumulates the negative charge. Metal, it accumulates, accumulates the negative charge. So, it accumulates the negative charge caused to the less stability of the complex, less stability of the complexes. But uh, this less stability of the complex was explained by the Pauling with their electron neutrality method, electro neutrality method. Now, we discussed some problems, how to calculate the effective atomic number, effective atomic number. So, we know that actual atomic number minus oxidation state plus 2 into coordination number. Whenever this effective atomic number of a metal in a complex which is equal to the next noble gases, then it's said to be stable complexes. Otherwise, it is on unstable complexes. The first example is cobalt NH3 six times Cl3. Here, oxidation state is equal to plus 3. Coordination number is equal to 6. We know that. Again, cobalt uh, atomic number. We don't know the atomic number of uh, D black elements, so that, that's why we remembered all the elements scandium, titanium, vanadium, chromium, molybdenum, sorry, chromium, manganese, iron, cobalt, nickel, copper, zinc. Now, here 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Now, the cobalt atomic number is 27. The cobalt atomic number is 27. Then Calculation of EIN like this, 27. Oxidation state is uh, plus 3. <coughs> now, plus 2 into coordination number is 6. 27 minus 3 is 24. Plus 2 into 6 is uh, 
12. 24 plus 12, which is equal to the 36, which is equal to the next configure, next noble gas is nothing but a krypton. That's why this complex is stable. This complex is stable. Now, the second example is K4, Fe, Cn six times. Here, oxidation state is equal to plus 2. Coordination number is equal to 6. Now, the actual atomic number, E effective atomic number is equal to, actual atomic number of iron is 26 minus oxidation state plus 2 into 6. That means 24 plus 12, which is nothing but 36, is equal to the krypton. So, the stability of coordination complexes, which was, uh, which was explained by the uh, 18 electron rule, which is nothing but uh, completely filled their outermost shell of electrons. Now, we explained the, these two complexes with the help of 18 electrons. Now, first one is cobalt NH3 6 times Cl3. Here, that means cobalt in plus 3 oxidation state. The configuration of cobalt is 4S2 3D7. We know that the conf electronic configuration of uh, cobalt, their outermost valence electron cell. Now, cobalt plus 3 means here loss of 3 electron. So, 2 electron loss from 4S orbital, 1 electron loss from 3D orbital, then it becomes 3D6. Here, 6 electrons can contribute to the complex. Now, each ammonia donate their pair of electrons. That means each, each ammonia can donate 2 electrons. So, that's why 6 ammonias can give 6 to 2s are 12 electrons, then it is nothing but 18 electrons. That's why it is also stable. Now, the second example is K4, Fe, Cn6. Here, that means Fe is 4s2, 3d6. Fe plus 2 means 3d6. Here, two electrons lost from 4s orbital only because of their outermost valence shell due to the their outermost valence system. Now, here, each cyanide ion donate their pair of electrons, 6 cyanides, which will, will give 6 to 0, 12 electrons. 12 plus 6 electrons, total 18 electrons. It is also stable. Now, we will calculate the some of the unstable complexes with the help of effective as well as 18 electron rule. Effective as well as 18 electron rule. Now, the best example is K3, Fe, Cn6 times. So now here calculate with the help of effective atomic number with the help of 18 electron rule. And now here oxidation state is plus 3, coordination number is 6. So here effective atomic number is equal to the actual atomic number of iron is 26 minus oxidation state is 3 plus 2 into its coordination number. 23 plus 12, that means 35, which is not equal to the any next noble gas configuration, which is not equal to the krypton. That's why it is unstable complexes. That's why it is unstable complexes. With the help of 18 electron rule, so the uh, electron configuration of iron is 4s2, 3d6. Now, iron plus 2 configuration, that means uh, 3d6. Here, it donates 6 electrons only. Again, each, <coughs> sorry, oxidation state is plus 3. That's why it is 3D5. Here it donates 5 electrons only. Now 6 cyanide ions can donate the, each pair of electrons. So then it is 12 electrons. Now the total electrons is a 17 electrons. So 17 electrons are unstable. 18 electrons are stable. So the stability of the complexes explained by the, with the help of effective atomic number as well as 18 electron rule. 18 electron rule that means uh, NS2, NP6 is octet configuration. NS2, NP6, uh, N minus 1D or ND, 10, that means uh, 18 electron complexes. So, 8 electron complexes are stable, stabilized with the help of uh, octet configuration. So, now 18 electrons are also stabilized. So, the stability of the complex compounds was explained by the these three, these two theories. One is uh, effective atomic number, another one is uh, 18 electrons. Now, we can calculate the, we can exercise the some of the problems by using the effective atomic number. So, the first example is Platinum Cl6 times minus 2. Here oxidation state is equal to 4. Coordination number is equal to 6. We don't know the actual atomic number of platinum. With the help of triads, we can calculate the actual atomic number of platinum. Nickel 
palladium platinum these three are the triads and nickel atomic number is 28 palladium atomic number which is added by the 18 then it is 46 so next row it, it uh, included by the uh, lanthanides that's why it is uh, 32 then it becomes 78 then it becomes 78 so now effective atomic number of the first example is 78 minus oxidation state is 4 plus 2 into 6 then 74 plus 12 that means 86 which is equal to the radon so which is equal to the radon that, be, that means it is a stablest compound radon is a noble gas configuration now the second example is cr co six times now here chromium oxidation state is zero coordination number is equal to six then the effective atomic number is equal to chromium atomic number 24 minus zero plus two into six and then 24 plus 12 it becomes 36 which is equal to the krypton it is also stable one which is also stable one now the third example is FeCO5 times here oxidation state is equal to 0 coordination number is equal to 5 then effective atomic number is equal to 26 plus 0 plus 2 into 5 that means 26 plus 10 which is equal to the 36 the third one also a stable complexes third one also a stable complexes <laughs> now the fourth one is nickel co4 times so here oxidation state is equal to 0 coordination number is equal to 4 so now effective atomic number is equal to nickel atomic number 28 plus minus 0 plus 2 into 4 that means 28 plus 8 which is equal to the 36 it is also stablest configuration which is 36 is nothing but a krypton configuration so in generally metal carbonyls effective atomic number formula like this so actual atomic number minus 2 into its coordination number why because metal carbonyls oxidation state is equal to the zero that's why we eliminate the the word of oxidation state it is enough to show the uh, effective atomic number of uh, metal carbonyls pure metal carbonyls now the example number five is copper cn four times here minus three that means copper plus one oxidation state oxidation state is equal to one then coordination number is equal to four effective atomic number is equal to 29 is the copper 29 minus 1 plus 2 into 4 that means 28 plus 8 which is equal to the 36 it is also equal to the krypton it is a stablest compound stablest compounds the first five we are stable compounds the first five are stable compounds so now the sixth number is nicl4 minus 2 here oxidation state is equal to 2 then coordination number is equal to 4 then effective atomic number is equal to nickel Nickel atomic number is 28 minus 2 plus 2 into 4. That means 26 plus 8, the, which is equal to the 14, does not equal to the any nearest noble gas configuration. That's why it is unstable complexes. Sixth one is unstable complexes. Nickel Cl4 minus 2 as well as Nickel Cn4 minus 2, which are uh, both are same, which both are same. Now, the example number is Now, the example number is FeCl4 minus 2. Now, here oxidation state is equal to 2, coordination number is equal to 4, effective atomic number is equal to the 26 minus 2 plus 2 into 4. That means 24 plus 8, which is equal to the 32, which is also unstable complexes. Unstable complexes. Now, the question number, uh, uh, problem number 8 platinum Cl4 minus 2. That means oxidation state is equal to 2, coordination number is equal to 4. We know the uh, uh, effective <coughs> atomic number of a platinum, so which is nothing but a 78. So 78 minus 2 plus 2 into 4, that means a 76 plus 8, uh, which is nothing but 84, unstable, which is not equal to the radar. Now the ninth example is uh, palladium Cl4 minus 2 that means uh, oxidation state is equal to 2 coordination number is equal to 4 then effective atomic number is equal to the palladium palladium that means nickel palladium platinum now here 28 46 78 now 
Atom H all atomic number is 46 minus 2 plus 2 into 4. That means 44 plus 8, which is equal to the 52, does not equal to the 54 of uh, xenon. So it is also unstable. So 10th one and 6th one both are same. That's why we did not calculate the 10th one, which is all both are the same. The trick about effective atomic number, so which very helps whether it is complex, stable or not. So I'll give this simple trick. Now we know the series of chromium, manganese, iron, cobalt, nickel, copper, zinc. So whenever it having the coordination number 6 and coordination number 4. Coordination number 6 and coordination number 4. So in case of coordination number 6, chromium 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. In case of coordination number 4, nickel onwards 0 plus 1 plus 2. Whenever chromium in 0 oxidation state at the coordination number 6, it obeys the effective atomic number. That's why it is stable. Manganese plus 1, it obeys the effective atomic number with the help of a 6 coordination number. Iron plus 2, it is also... Uh, obeys the effective atomic number cobalt plus 3 it obeys the effective atomic number nickel plus 4 which is also helps to obey the effective atomic number at the oxidation number 4 with the help of coordination number 6 now coordination number 4 complexes nickel in 0 it, it obeys the effective atomic number so the best example is nickel CO 4 times it helps it is a stabilist compound we already discussed here it is the stable compound now in copper plus one also stable copper plus one also stable we also discussed copper plus one fifth one which is also stable now in case of zn plus two which is nothing but a zn plus two or cadmium plus two or mercury plus two whenever if nickel possesses with plus four at coordination number six that means these three triads from nickel palladium platinum all are obeys their effective atomic number stability at the oxidation number four with coordination number six at oxidation number zero at coordination number four that means here chromium molybdenum tungsten which all are helps to obey the effective atomic number at zero manganese technetium rhenium are also exhibit the effective atomic number is plus one iron ruthenium osmium it helps the atomic number is six i think uh, plus four coordination number six I did not uh, uh, watch the, watch the uh, video cover the video now plus four it is coordination number six uh, generally iron plus two iron ruthenium osmium at a plus two oxidation state with the help of coordination number six uh, it obeys the effective atomic number as well in, as usually cobalt rhodium iridium can also exhibit the plus three oxidation state with the help of coordination number. It shown the stability of the complexes. This is the very simple and very easy trick to find the stability of the complexes. Thank you for watching. Problems on Werner's theory. So a six coordinate complex is a CrCl36 water molecule has green in color. So a green color complex is a 0.1 m solution of that complex when treated with excess of AZNO3 it gives 28.7 grams of uh, a white precipitate. So the formula of the complex generally the reaction of the question is CrCl3 6 water molecule treated with excess of AZNO3 it gives AZCl it gives AZCl. So according to the options how many number of moles of AZCl would be formed? How many number of moles of AZCl would be formed? So generally according to the question 0.1 m molar solution they are given in the molarity now we will we will convert the molarity to the normality number of moles m is equal to number of moles by volume here volume is 1 liter then n is equal to m into v molarity 0.1 then volume is 1, number of moles also 0 0.1, here number of moles 0 0.1 mole, 0 0.1 mole. So if 0 0.1 mole means option number 1 is correct, if 0 0.2 mole means option number 2 is correct, if 0 0.3 means 3 chloride ions present at ionization where according to that of Werner's theory. So fourth option is not correct, due to they are given in clearly, they are given in the question 28.7 grams of white precipitate is formed. So white precipitate is nothing but here. It, it formed as a precipitate, it formed as a precipitate. Here 1 chlorine means 0 0.1 ml, so 2 chlorine means 2 into 0 0.1 that means 0 0.2. 
to 3 chlorine means 0 0.3, 0 0.3. So in general, the number of moles is equal to weight by molecular weight. So molecular weight of AgCl is, Ag molecular weight is 108, Cl molecular weight is 35.5, then total 143.5. So the total molecular weight of uh, <laughs> AgCl is 143.5. So n is equal to weight uh, already they are given 28.7 by molecular weight means 143.5. That means here 1 time 5 times approximately 3, 3 5 is 150 which are closer. So 1 by 5 that means 0 0.2 moles. So 0 0.2 moles means 2 chloride ions present. 0 0.2 moles means 2 chloride ions present at ionization sphere at ionization sphere so according to that uh, second option is correct second question came from 2019 gate uh, which is similar to the previous one here instead of chlorides they are given in the bromides so now the solution equation from the question is cr h2o taking three times with a three bromide ions then which treated with a uh, excess of AgNO3 it gives uh, AgBr as a precipitate which is nothing but 0 0.94 grams the quantity is 0 0.94 grams so if 0 0.94 grams is equal to the one mole then the option is a C so fourth option is not correct fourth option is not correct why because here it produces some quantity of uh, silver bromide that's why it is not correct now the third option if, if our equal our weight is equivalent to the one mole then it said to be fourth it's the third option is correct or two moles second option is correct or three moles the first option is correct so now how to calculate the number of moles according to the question so they are given in the weight they did not give in the number of moles. We know that the formula of number of moles is equal to weight by molecular weight. Here molecular weight of the complex. So complex is a Cr, H2O taken six times, Br3. So the molecular weight of the complex is generally chromium molecular weight 58, 52. So bromine molecular weight 80, 3 8 are 240. Again six water molecule, 18 6 are 108. Now, molecular weight of the complex is 400. So, N is equal to 1 by 400. 1 by 400. That means, uh, 1 by 4 into 10 to the power minus 2. That means, uh, 0 0.25, 0 0.25 into 10 to the power minus 2 means 0 0.0025. So here number of moles is 0 0.0025. So now our question is equal to the 0 0.0025. That means one number of mole. So our question is equal to the two number of moles. And then that means 0 0.05. So if our question is related to the three moles, then the option is 0 0.005. Here it is. It means one number of bromine, two number of bromines, three number of bromide ions. So now the answer is N is equal to weight of the complex is 0 0.94 now the molecular weight of the complex which is produced that is nothing but AZBR so now the molecular weight of AZBR like this so AZ molecular weight 108 bromine molecular weight 80 so that means 188 188 so here which is multiplied with 100 and divided by the 100 that means 94 by 188 into 1 by 100 here 1 by 2 times 1 by 2 into 1 by 100. So I will solve here. 1 by 2 means 0 0.5 into 10 to the power minus 2. That means 0 0.005. So this 0 0.005, it, it means 2 number of bromide ions. Now our option is B correct.